The information discussed on Pocket Money with Jeff Tarbell is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be construed as a specific recommendation of a particular investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. Views only is directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen... The radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. All right, good morning. How's everybody doing out there? It is the first week of April going down. Jeff Tarbell is out vacationing. Good for him. And uh, I'm in the studio. This is John Fodorero. I'm here with Mike Ferrara. And uh, he's a Roseville branch manager. We also have Jeff Sipes. He's with Blue Water Credit. And uh, the theme of the day is going to be credit, baseball, and some craziness and stimulus. So uh, everybody tune in. There's crazy life going on out there. I think April always brings... You know, just the end of winter, the beginning of spring, uh, baseball, we have mm-hmm. uh, the Final Four, we have home buying getting crazy out there, yep. we have, um, you know, kind of the the whole government kind of settling in with their stimulus packages, what's mm-hmm. happening, and, uh, you know, we see people looking for jobs, people not looking for jobs, apparently is the new thing is to not look for a job. So uh, <laughs> before we get into all that, yep. uh, we're lucky enough to have Chris Ferlaud here, and he always gives us his rendition of what's going on, and we know there's a lot going on with uh, even the Kings. So who knows? What's he got to say today? Well, uh, nothing really new with the Kings, so I uh, thought I'd change some lives today. And uh, if you're not into soccer, there's a lot of people saying that I don't care about soccer. On Monday is the game to watch Manchester United versus Manchester City. It, the equivalent I would come up with with if the two best teams in football were the San Francisco 49ers and the Oakland Raiders, and they played once a year. This is going to be huge. Everyone's going to be watching mm-hmm. it. And the best place to watch it, if you're sort of like, I'm not sure if I want to get into this or not, go to an English pub. You can find them anywhere. You're going to find tons of soccer fans watching the game, getting to, into each other's faces. So this is going to be great. I'm really excited. I've been so excited for this game for about uh, a couple months now. And it's not even worth anything. Everyone just wants the bragging rights of I beat you. So that's mm-hmm. a big game coming up, and I can't wait. Cool. So bragging rights. It's all about bragging rights. Yes. Very good. Good. So uh, – Last week we were talking a little bit about colleges, and uh, I was fortunate enough last night to go out to Sac State. Yes, it is Jeff Tarbell's alma mater, so it is ranked mm. up there as a high high level school. But uh, I was out there; they have a Peak Adventures, uh, which is a ropes course where you can get out and kind of high wire walk. You can walk across telephone poles. You can stand on top of a telephone pole, and uh, it's pretty interesting. You know, when you go out to a college, it's it's you know think about college mm-hmm. days where you're almost invincible. I mean, you were there to learn. <laughs> you think you are. <laughs> you yeah. d- exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I see these kids out there, and then I was reading this week on uh, some different colleges and, and these kids that are, you know, going to the, some of the high-level schools, and, and they're just out there doing things, you know. They're kind of free of, hey, let's let's create the, the Klingle, which is this wallet that apparently is your telephone that sources as a wallet. And mm. uh, it's just I think that the brain just works so much when you're you know just there and in the motion. You got a lot of other like kind people around you. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think the expectations are uh, the the lid's been blown off with all the success of young people these days, like you know mm-hmm. Facebook owner. And so I think uh, at least when I was in college, I was like, oh, I got to go get a, go to college and then go get a job. And I think the people these days are like, well, I'm gonna and create something. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I was thinking about this clinkle that uh, is starting starting to come about as we see the Facebook phone starting to come. Um, but this was pretty interesting. The guy started this phone that acts as a wallet when he was in Europe, and they kept giving him all this weird change. And he's like, I got all this clinging going on in my pocket, and it's driving me crazy. And now I go home with all this money that I can never use again. And uh, made me think of Jeff when we were in Canada, and they gave him some change for his dollar bills. And 
apparently he was just throwing change around like it was pennies and it was about 20 bucks. So uh, <laughs> I thought he could use it pretty well. Nice. But uh, here we are Saturday morning. Thanks for tuning in. You can text us at 339-1140 or you can call us at 1-800-920-1140. Tell us what you're thinking. Uh, my thought was if somebody texted in with, you know, what what is some of the craziest? So watching uh, CNN the other night and they're talking about some stimulus packages some of the government uh, brought out these stimulus packages to create jobs, and uh, there's some wacky ones out there. I mean, it is just mind-boggling on you know, what the government has come up with to create mm-hmm. jobs, and, and a lot of them just aren't creating the jobs. So if you have something that you think is crazy, text us, 339-1140. If you have something to ask us, uh, we do have credit expert Jeff Sipes here, so we're thankful to have him from Blue Water Credit. And uh, you know, the real estate industry right now is robust. We got interest rates. We got buying. We got mm-hmm. selling. We got equity coming in. Crazy. Um, it's it's very very cool. So, before we get started with all that, just wanted to say to uh, my son who's got his uh, Eastern Little League baseball game today. Good luck to the A's. I know Jeff's heading out to soccer this morning. Mike said he's got uh, golf tournaments and all kinds yep. of other things with his kids. So, uh, lots going on today. And then again with Jeff and Kim's twin girls. Their 15-year-old birthday is on Monday, so happy birthday to the twins. Happy birthday. And I uh, hope you guys are safe and secure without your parents at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 15. Always a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember those days. Yes. So um, let's see. Jeff, tell me a little bit about, uh, you're from Blue Water Credit. You know, I for me, you know, it might sound boring and, and drab, but I mean, we could talk about credit all day long. You yeah. Know, how do you establish credit? How do you ruin your credit? How do you fix your credit? How... You know what does credit mean? Is credit sure. you can almost look at credit in sense of a dollars, you know, good credit, bad credit. Mm-hmm. Um, you could look at it char- character, kind of you know pinpoint people based on their credit and things like that. So yeah, uh, exactly. Maybe just an overview of credit and what you do. Sure. So uh, when I teach on this, I always talk about uh, what credit means, and I always ask you know what four letter word comes to mind when I say credit score. Do you guys have a, any thoughts with a four letter word for me? Starts with an F. Yeah. Let's say FICO. And uh, FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. So Mm -hmm. they've been around for about 25 years. And what they did was analyze over a million and a half credit reports. And uh, they were identifying trends on people uh, that were going to go delinquency or have a delinquency. And so uh, what they've done is uh, they've found, you know, people that uh, pay late are likely to pay late. People uh, with maxed out credit cards are likely to pay late. Mm -hmm. People with uh, not very long credit history are likely to pay late. If you don't have a good mix of credit. So they like to see credit card, they like to see a car loan, like to see a mortgage. Uh, then also, how many times have you applied for credit in the last 12 months? So it's inquiries. So with credit, you know, we, we, we know all this, but at the same time, we go to high school, we go to college, nobody ever talks about credit. Right. I mean, why, why is that? Yeah, you know, that's a big miss, uh, in my opinion, because, you know, just I'll give you my story. So I, I graduate from high school, go down to Sierra College. I have... Uh, people handing out credit cards at college there. I, they can't do that now. but mm-hmm. So I get a credit card with a $1,200 limit. I'm like, I have $1,200 to spend. <laughs> Let's go shopping. <laughs> Let's go. Absolutely. Yeah. Pizza. And then the reality sets in, uh, you know, it's going to take a long time to pay this off. I didn't have 1200 bucks at the time. And, you know, if you make minimum payments on your credit cards, it takes 15 to 20 years to pay those off. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you, you, uh, John, you asked about what a credit score means. So really a credit score represents your risk to the bank. And so uh, it's a lot like a, a casino. A bank's are like a casino in the, in the fact that they want to know their odds of getting repaid. And so FICO, uh, that number, so say if you have a 620 credit score, the bank knows one out of 15 people will default on their loans if they all have 620 credit scores. If you jump up to a 720 credit score, your odds of default go uh, like to one out of 600. And then if you get up to an 800 credit score, your odds of defaulting are one out of 1,500. So I don't know about you, but if I had uh, only lost one out of 1,500 bets, I'd be at Thunder Valley right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So credit scores make a big difference. They. Uh, what's the best way to get started? I mean, obviously, I did the same thing, going to college. Everybody's handing out credit cards. What do you need to do? Yeah. Sign your name, yeah. put your social security number, date of birth, and boom, you have credit. Right. What? Yeah. uh What's the best way? So a lot of, you know, I get a lot of clients that their kids are starting to get to age or, you know, what what is the best way? Is it to sign up by yourself? Is it sign up on your parents? Is yeah. it to, what, what would you say? Yeah. So we, we um, about 10 years ago, uh, being signed on as an authorized user was really like the, 
the the trick with credit scores is like, hey, you can sign on to your uncle, you know, Mike's credit card, and that's going to show up on your credit report. Well, um, there the uh, FICA is getting privy to that, and so we're seeing sometimes that report, sometimes it doesn't. So we always recommend go out and get your own secured card. Uh, secured card is where you're putting down the collateral, mm-hmm. and then the uh, uh, the bank is going to give you a credit card with a similar line of credit with the amount you put down. And typically, credit unions are your best bet to get a secured card. Uh, if that doesn't work, we like to recommend uh, the, that you go to credit.com and just search secured cards. One thing that I would be leery of is uh, look at the annual fee. Mm-hmm. You know, some secured cards have a hundred, two hundred dollar annual fee, and uh, you know, in my opinion, that's you can, wow. Yeah, you, you can get can around do much that. better. Oh, than yeah. That. So you get yeah. a five hundred dollars secured card, and it's costing you two hundred bucks yeah, a year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And there's one big. Uh, miss on this is people think that a prepaid card is the same as a secured card. It's like Walmart has a prepaid visa. That doesn't show up on your credit. Right. Secured card is going to show up on your credit report. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I would say the same thing with uh, the credit unions in the area, Golden Ones, uh, Safe Credit Unions, uh, et cetera. They they definitely, because I know they post pretty quick too, within like 60 days or so. Yeah, you're Mm -hmm. exactly right. All right. So uh, is there a certain age when you can start your credit, when you can do a secured card? 18. um, 18. As long as, uh, you know, I always tell people, uh, it's like kind of like a gun. You don't want to be responsible with your your credit. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you're uh, going to be responsible, go out. Typically, FICO likes to see at least three active credit cards. And then the secret with this, if anybody's listening, this is the only thing they could take away from my piece. No, nobody's listening yeah. yet. It's only 10 <laughs> after 9. Everybody Wake up, up, everyone. Anyone's Everybody wakes... had a cup of coffee yet. This exactly. is kind of the key with your credit score is FICO wants you to use your credit cards, but they only want you to use a small percentage of your limit. So we usually tell people to maximize your credit score. You only want to use between 1% and 10% of your credit limit. 1% and 10%? Yeah. That's the best number, huh? Yeah. Okay. Fi- yeah. FICA's website states the highest credit scores in their country had carry an average balance of around 7%. Mm-hmm. So as long as you're 10% or under, you're guaranteed to have a high score. And I know in our world in mortgage, if you start using more than 30%, it could drastically change the score like overnight. Or if you close a credit card out because you're not using it, that takes away that available limit. So we always tell people, yep. don't close the card, pay it to zero, keep the card in a safe place, right. but don't close it out because that available credit is now taken from you. Yep, exactly. Cool. So the other thing we see, uh, at least we see in the news these days, is everybody's starting to use their credit, mm-hmm. whether it's credit cards, buying a car, buying a truck, uh, financing their furniture, um, I'm looking for my article here, but uh, consumer credit mm-hmm. jumps by the most in the six months. U.S. consumers increased their debt in February by a seasonally adjusted $18.1 billion. Mm, that's healthy. So uh, the increase is above January's <laughs> $12.7 billion pace. So in January, we're at $12.7 billion and uh, February, $18.1 billion. So here we are, and we're we're looking at jobs. We still don't see a lot of jobs, in my opinion. Uh, people are spending money. We're seeing that. Mm-hmm. We're seeing people put money in the stock market. Uh, we're seeing new. I see more new cars on the road than mm-hmm. you have in the last four or five years. And um, you know, from this article by uh, the Wall Street Journal, it's saying the non-revolving category of debt, such as auto loans, personal loans, and student loans, is uh, is the big jump. So it, interesting enough that we have all these different types of credit too. We have non-revolving, right. revolving, installment loan, uh, student loans. So a lot of different things, but people use credit. And, and I think it's really important to use it. Uh, <laughs> just got a text note line here. So Jeff Tarbell's friend at the 530 is uh, definitely awake and had his coffee this morning. <laughs> Good job. But, uh, <laughs> so l- credit, I mean, I love it. So what, let's get into a, a little commercial break here. Let's see. Mike, you got any quiz questions for us I this do. morning? I actually have a really good one. So we know that airlines typically charge for baggage, extra bags, etc. So some of us choose wisely. But Samoa Airlines has now started charging customers a weight fee. The weight fee is not your baggage. It's the actual being, the human being that's sitting in the chair. What is the amount they're charging per pound for Samoan Airlines? So I, I step on a scale. Step on a and scale when, I, when, when you're I there. When I go online to get my <laughs> ticket, I put in how much I weigh. How much you weigh. And then it's times whatever number. Times whatever and number. And that's my cost. Yep, yeah, that's correct. I wow. Wonder, I wonder if it makes a difference if you pay for one or two seats. <laughs> 
I, I don't see that. All but right. There, it's a cents per pound. So what is that number? So there's our quiz question. First one in the morning, we have uh, Round Table Artesian Pizzas. Mm-hmm. We have River Cats. And uh, we're thankful again to Sierra at Tahoe for the ski tickets this year for their uh, partnership. And um, give us a call, text 339-1140 or 1-800-920-1140. We'll be right back. Talking money! Well, all righty then. We're back to Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. All right, all right. Good morning. This is not Jeff Tarbell. This is John Fotorero with a cold. And uh, it just kind of spruced my radio voice up with this deep, raspy cold. Can't swallow at night, so uh, it's awesome. <laughs> but uh, glad to be here. Jeff's out, out on vacation and uh, fortunate enough to have Mar- uh, Mark. Hey, Mark. How you I, doing? I've been called Mark, Tim. <laughs> That's uh, those are okay yeah, words. Those are okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I like Mikey, but that's yeah, just me. Mikey, that's yeah. very pompous. Mikey, yeah. let's go with Mikey. Mikey. So we have call Mikey. me Mikey for the rest of the okay. show. Ferrara here. He's the uh, Roseville branch manager of Comstock Mortgage, and uh, we also are fortunate enough to have Jeff Sipes here. He's from Blue Water Credit, and uh, he's just sharing some credit tips as we uh, all go through life, life challenges. Um, Life issues, call them what you want. Your friends' issues with credit, but uh, lots of different things going out there. So uh, for the vacationing, Jeff Tarbell, we're here, and uh, we're talking about some of the highlights of April. You know, April always brings on a lot of different things. Baseball, uh, apparently soccer going on next week, uh, yep. kids kids being involved in little leagues and, and everything else. So while everybody's very involved Credit is uh, increasing. The amount of debt load we're carrying in in our country is increasing, and apparently jobs are not increasing. I could have probably told you that because uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of change. But you know, articles are talking all week long about job growth. Job growth is slowing to a trickle. What's going mm-hmm. on with job growth? And uh, all this leads into interest rates, stock markets, um, economically what we feel and and how it affects us. So uh, this week, 88,000 uh, jobs created, which was way off targets of by about 100,000. Mm-hmm. And uh, the biggest number that I thought was interesting is even though we have a four-year low as far as unemployment, the reason is about a half million workers left the job market. So wow. when they do these rankings... They rank on who's actually active and looking for a job. Well, a half a million people decided apparently they're not, they're not going to look for a job anymore. So uh, a lot of different things going out there. What that did is put a huge spin on interest rates this week, uh, some numbers, and this is probably Chinese for some folks, but uh, overall week there was 144 basis change, and uh, that was the high point, and 122 it closed out on. What that means is interest rates probably went down about a quarter of a percent mm-hmm. in rate. So uh, quite a big change there. Had the phones ringing, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, Mike, what have you seen this week? Uh, same thing you're talking about. So like an average on a 30-year fixed conventional was three and a half. It was three seven five, three eight seven five wow. for previous weeks. FHA went down to three point two five. Um, some of your ARM products and others that you may be interested in are you know in the twos. So it's been a great time. I know we have a lot of people that kind of sit on the fence it, or it doesn't quite make sense. They probably refinanced the last year and they're like, you know, what's the real target rate? Is it 1%? Is it a half a percent? Well, that's really where a mortgage professional could kind of guide you through that because it's not a 1% or a half a percent. Depending on your loan balance, there's a lot of times when, you know, it's really payment driven and what fees you pay. And there are times when the rate may be only a half a percent better but there's significant savings over the life of the loan. So that's where we ask you, how long are you staying in the house? What's your plans? We may say, you know, we're going to stay forever and then move in two years. So that's where a professional could guide you through that. And then, of course, it all depends on the the Fair Isaac or the FICO score. Oh, that elusive score, that, that three-digit elusive number. Score. So that's where uh, we'll, mm. you know, open it up a little bit to Jeff. And uh, for most programs, the minimum credit score is going to be a 640. Um, so that's kind of our target. So if you're below that number, <clears throat> what do you do? So this is your opportunity um, to, to call in, text, whatever you need to do. And then we'll get Jeff's insight of um, what happens when that happens. 
and what do we do as professionals to help you to get over that 640 goal? Yeah, so most of our clients coming to us uh, are trying to purchase a house. And uh, like Mike said, 640 is kind of the magic number most banks are wanting for uh, credit. So the first thing we do when we meet with a client is look at their credit report, look at their debt in mm-hmm. terms of uh, their credit card debt. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the program, uh, paying down credit card debt is the fastest way to raise your score. So if you pay off a credit card, realistically, within 30 days, uh, your score is going to improve. Yeah, mm-hmm. There's a benefit to paying your cards down until you get to around the 10% of your limit range. Mm-hmm. And then if that doesn't get you the points you need, then uh, then there's you're going to have to look at uh, your derogatory uh, items, if you have any collections, charge-offs, mm-hmm. and then potentially uh, negotiating settlements for deletions, um, uh, potentially opening up a credit card if you don't have enough credit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but it, so if I'm a, a first-time home buyer and I was in college and nobody told me anything about credit and maybe I maxed everything out mm-hmm. and uh, finally I got a job, so I uh, got my career going and starting to pay down this credit card debt and most of my cards are maxed, some people say, well, you know, I have a 1000 bucks. What can I do with it? Mm-hmm. So we generally spread it around, get, get each one separately. What, what about... Having your credit uh, limits raised, how's that affect things? Can you call in and beg and plead yeah. to have your, <laughs> well, your limits question. raised or what? Great question. So, yeah, of course you can call your credit card company and, mm-hmm. and request uh, that they improve uh, or increase the limit. But what they're going to do is they're going to pull a hard inquiry on your credit. So that's going to affect your score up to five points. And then if you're likely in trouble, they're not going to give you that in- mm-hmm. increase. So what you did is take a step back five points you know, mm-hmm. roughly five points by inquiring about that limit increase. So uh, we are talking about break a little bit too. Um, you know, the big thing we see as mortgage originators is people that are, are looking at their credit online, however they're they're getting their mm-hmm. own scores, and they're saying, well, my score is a 685, a 672, and a 668. And then, you know, we ask how, oh, no, those are my scores. That's right. And, mm-hmm. and we know that when we pull it for a mortgage rating, there's a totally different number and yeah, it's always huge, yeah. lower. Yeah. Um, and then, well, I just bought a car. Well, okay, mm-hmm. that was your first mistake. You yeah. buy a car. <laughs> You're going to live go in that car. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully it has a nice sized trunk. Yeah. So what is, what is the difference there when you're looking at credit people? You know, all we hear anymore is freecreditreport.com, Great. free this, free that, um, check your credit, make sure you know what's on there. But uh, definitely some differences there. How, how's that work? Yeah. So everyone knows there's three major credit bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So, Common sense tells us if I go to Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax, I should be able to get my credit score. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. They're going to sell you a a score that's their own version. Mm -hmm. And last year, consumers spent over a billion dollars buying credit scores that were not the same scores lenders use. How much was that? Over a billion dollars. Wow. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So needless to say, there's a lot of money in selling credit scores. Mm -hmm. Now, we wrote an article recently about how a credit score does not come with a credit report. A uh, credit score is an ancillary product, so it's a separate product. So, like, if mm-hmm. you go to the car dealership and you buy a, a regular car, it's not going to come with leather. It's an it's an upgrade. Well, buying a credit report and then buying a credit score, would you'd have to be an additional fee usually or an upgrade. Yeah, it's like adding the letter or the sunroof. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, the only credit score banks use is called FICO, and that's Fair Isaac Corporation. And so the only way for a consumer to get a FICO score is either from a lender or they have to go to myfico.com. And unfortunately, the scores are about $20 per bureau. Mm-hmm. So they're wow. not free. Well, here's the trick. If you call in and talk to one of our professionals at Comstock, we'll pull your credit and we won't charge you up front. So that's a service that we provide, mm-hmm. looks at the numbers, and then we could tell you exactly what it's going to be. Yeah, definitely. One of the mm-hmm. biggest things I always see is, is somebody that says, well, I'm not quite sure. I don't mm-hmm. really want to pull my credit because it's going to affect it. And the reality is if you're looking at buying anything or you're looking at maybe getting married and you might want to tell your your new spouse what your credit score is because you yeah, think you might want to buy a house. I thought that was mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> Should be. We have credit applications in our room. You know, people that want to date my daughter, I'm like, hey, that's great. Go ahead and fill out yeah. this application and I'll get back to you in 48 hours. <laughs> but it does. It, it does show a little bit about your character, your usability. <clears throat> but what I'm getting at is just, you know, what are these scores? How do how do we take care of them? Um, you know, h- how's it going to affect my rate? Mm-hmm. You know, what what if I want to buy a house, and you know, you call in, we pull your credit, we get get your uh, income information, we take a look at everything. 
you know, it takes work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people go through life. They've had these challenges of bankruptcies, foreclosures, things like that, um, or college, college debt, you know, eating out every night or, mm-hmm. or drinking beer or whatever you do, <laughs> not studying. Yeah, or buying books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's life's expensive, you know. We're just talking about jobs reports down and everything else. So it's definitely uh, something we use a lot. I think uh, American-wise, we need to use it better. Um, I'd say Europe needs to do it too. You know, the article here, uh, Wall Street Journal Business Finance section talks about Europe building their own Chapter 11, Hmm. how they're going to reshape bankruptcy. So uh, I'm not sure how that's going to take place and how that'll show up on their credit score, but uh, I'm sure there'll be an effect there. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, what are you seeing this week? Are you seeing good credit, bad credit, everything in between? I think for new home buyers, or when we say new home buyers, that's someone that hasn't purchased a home in three years. Doesn't mean that you're 21 years old, just graduated from college, and you're ready to buy a house. These are people that may have lost house, lost a house over the years, had to file bankruptcy over the years because of what happened in the economy. And the biggest thing what I tell them is, guy, there's a starting point that you have. Okay, the starting point is pulling credit and finding out what's on your credit report. We work with professionals that could help, but start with that. Don't be afraid of it. Don't worry about it. Come to us. Let's see where we're at. And then we have professionals we work with like Jeff and others that could get you in the right direction. And one of the biggest things is, you know, we we help clients that have lost a house in the last three, four years, pull their credit. But a lot of times they come through that, they get educated at the time, and then they're ready to repurchase. Don't wait until the three years is up and then right. decide that you want to buy. Do something ahead of time about six months out. That way, when your time frame is up, your waiting period, and we'll go into that more details. John has um, some printouts here. We could have you be ready so when you hit the mark, you're ready to start looking at homes. Yeah, and one yep. thing that I always tell people, there's two types of credit reports. You have consumer and then you have lender. Correct. And consumer credit reports, in my opinion, are not nearly as detailed um, mm-hmm. You're gonna with a lender report. You know they're basing what they see uh, uh, to lend thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Consumer credit reports are always incomplete. You're not gonna have accurate scores. So it's seeing getting a credit from a lender is so crucial. I think mm-hmm. for making decisions. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, so you know obviously we, we're doing a lot of that um, at Comstock Mortgage, and and one of the things that we came up with this week that a lot of people are looking at because for our realtors out there. A lot of people in the market right now buying are folks that had short sales, had foreclosures. Um, So I was just going to run through a short list here, um, timelines. So with FHA foreclosure, from three years from the date of foreclosure, you can now get back and buy a home. So a lot of people, you know, that went out in 08, 09, even 07, uh, pending Mm -hmm. what they did with their credit, have the ability to purchase again. And we're we're seeing a lot of that. Right. And the key to that really quick is not when you moved out of the house. Right. It's when the recording date of the house when that happened when the sell the transaction completed we look at the recording date and we right. could we could look that up for you and, i was going to say if, even, that, go if that sounded foreign uh, exactly like mike said we, yep. we can look that up for you we can pull a title profile because uh, mm-hmm. sometimes you've been out for two years and it, the timeline didn't even start yet correct yeah, and especially if you'd file bankruptcy included the house in the bankruptcy and then let it go into foreclosure that potentially pushes out that foreclosure date as well yep that's correct it could have delayed it so we'll look that up for you. Yeah. So we're fortunate enough to have Jeff Sipes here from Blue Water Credit. He's uh, given us a little schooling since we don't get it in high school or college. And uh, kind of happens when we, when we wake up and when we want to take some debt out. Um, back to our waiting period. So three years typically is our case on a foreclosure or a short sale. If uh, Chapter 7 bankruptcies were at two years, um, and these are FHA rules and guidelines. Conventional is going to be a little more strict mm-hmm. um, just because of where the money's coming from, what their appetite is. And mostly there you're looking at uh, four years and seven years depending. But uh, if you have a scenario, you're interested in talking about it, give us a call. You can call us at uh, 339-1140. You can call us at 1-800-920-1140. And we can uh, answer any questions you might have. Again, with our uh, Jeff Sipes here and Mike Ferrara. And uh, let's see what else we got in the news this week. Existing home sales uh, have been cut in half over the last six years. So uh, we're all seeing here in Sacramento inventory going way down. 
The number of existing homes for sales in USA has been cut in half over the last six years. There were 3.8 million homes for sale in February 2007. At the end of February 2013, 1.94 million. So uh, we're seeing a lot of that. If you can get out there and write an offer that's going to be conventional, you're going to write an offer with money down, um, you're going to have a lot, lot better possibility of buying that home. Um, if you're writing FHA, poor credit, no money, it's tougher. I'm not saying don't go out and do it, but uh, get yourself in the game. Um, well, when you're working on credit, is, is there fees in order to you to take a look at credit and work on it? Or can you give me just a, you know, without getting into too yeah. much detail, how's that work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how the process works is, um, you know, when we started our business five years ago, can I give you my story? Yeah. Okay. So I'll back up. Um, I was going to college, like we talked about, bought, got the credit card, maxed it out. And then uh, I, I had the idea to start a business uh, at the age of 21. So I dropped out of school and my business failed, ruined college my credit. College dropout. Yep, thank you. I got my uh, master's in the School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best degree you yeah. could get. So, uh, you know, it was, it was a hard uh, hard experience. You know, I maxed out my credit cards, borrowed money for this uh, business, and uh, my my behind on my Jeep payments, and I was living on my brother's couch. You know, that my Jeep, they were trying to repossess my Jeep, so I was hiding it from them mm-hmm. and, you know, you know, eating Top Ramen. That was my life. And uh, it's like... I had a rude awakening. I went in the Golden One Credit Union and tried to apply for a checking account. Well, I pulled my credit, and they said, oh, your credit's so bad, you don't even qualify for a Visa debit card. And I was like, oh, man, life is not fun right now. Mm -hmm. So I was embarrassed and shameful, and I was at a turning point. You know, I was thinking about filing bankruptcy, um, but I didn't. Uh, About a year after I went through that hardship, a friend of mine hired an attorney to help him with his credit. So when I found that out, I was like, holy cow, I need to find out more about this. Asked him a lot of questions, ended up doing a lot of research. I ended up settling a lot of my debt and then rebuilding my credit. And uh, four or five years later, well, this was, uh, oh gosh, about 13 years ago, uh, markets was uh, starting to move up. That's when the big real estate uh, mm-hmm. boom happened. So I bought my first place and six months later, I ended up flipping it for a profit. And I was like, this is awesome. So I started buying and selling real estate on the side. And a lot of my friends came to me and they said, hey, I want to buy a house, but I have bad credit. So I was like, oh, well, I know a little bit about credit. Let me help you on the side. And so I helped a few of my ho- my friends that were turned down for a house fix their credit and get into a home. And it was such a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, um, seeing them being turned down and then getting them approved. I mean, that access is huge. So we saw the need for this in mm-hmm. uh, 2008. So that's when we started Blue Water Credit. Awesome. Very cool. Well, let's get ready to take a break here. Let's see. Uh, we didn't get a quiz winner to the last one, and that was in uh, with the Samoan Airlines. How much uh, per pound does it cost to fly? And let me just give you a little hint. It is not uh, a quat loose. It is actually in cents. It's less than 50 <laughs> cents a pound, but uh, there's some big boys in uh, over in that area. Mm-hmm. But uh, that is our first quiz question. Still looking for an answer there. And, Mike, I think you have another question for us. Yeah, what do you got? It has to do with uh, the cost of gas and taxes. And uh, there's basically five states. California is amongst the five highest. We, You know, you can guess what that is. But how much uh, per gallon do you think you're paying in taxes? Now, if you've been to the to the pump lately, it's actually written there. So if you're by a gas station, you'll probably be able to figure this out pretty quick. But what is the cost of per gallon you pay in tax in taxes? All right. That's uh, a lot of tax. And I know the tax is going to fix our roadways and things mm-hmm. of that sort. So uh, that is our question here. See if you call in. We have artisan pizzas. We also have River Cats tickets. And uh, give us a call. We'll be back. See I'll ya. be back. <laughs> Back to talking money, and here's Jeff Tarbell. All right, all right. Everybody's bobbing their head here in the studio, having fun, <laughs> loving it. Hey, uh, John, I just got a text from my wife, and she said my five-year-old son Jaden was going to ask if I was going to get a trophy for being on the radio. <laughs> 
<laughs> Absolutely. So as we started the show talking about our kids and, and Little League and soccer games, you know, that that's what they look forward to. They get done yep. the game, they get done the season, and they get a trophy. So uh, pretty interesting there. The five-year-old <laughs> looking at it, you know, from his point of view. Yeah, perspective. Got to love his perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Good stuff. So for those that are just joining us, just waking up here Saturday morning, we're here with Jeff Sipes from Blue Water Credit. Mike Ferrara, he is from Comstock Mortgage and Roseville Branch Manager. And we're talking about income. We're going to get into baseball in the second half, opening week of baseball. We have a good friend of mine coming in from the River Cats. And as we're talking about credit here, what, how important credit is, I know it's very exciting, the credit world, but uh, to us that live in it. <laughs> I'm excited. I know. <laughs> to us that live in it, we could probably talk about it all day long. You know, if this, then that. What about this? How do I increase my credit? What's the credit yeah. cost? Yeah. So there's so many different pieces. But, uh, you know, from our 12 debt myths that trip up consumers, the, the one item here is, says uh, a high income and credit score means you'll be pitched the lowest interest rates on credit cards. So just because you have a high income, does that have anything to do with your credit score? Yeah, absolutely not. That, that um, your income, your race, your religion, your sex, nothing, that, that does not factor into your credit score whatsoever. And, and credit generally is, is, in my opinion, made up of bad information. Yeah, If you exactly. do something good, it doesn't really help you. But yeah. if you do something bad, it's very detrimental. Well, here's a crazy statistic. So recent studies show that the, the credit bureaus, out of 10 credit reports, uh, seven and a half of them will have mistakes on them. And wow. so we've seen mistakes as serious as the credit bureaus report the client as deceased. And they're alive, obviously. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's just amazing. So seven and a half out of 10 credit reports are incorrect. So yep. 75%. Yeah, but well, it's about 78%, yeah. Yeah. So one thing we always stress is that at least twice a year, you want to check your credit. Now, you can, you are entitled to one free credit report per year. It's at annualcreditreport.com. Uh, but in my opinion, it's a piece of junk. It's uh, all three bureaus are going to be about 100 pages to go through. Mm. So good luck reading that. <laughs> so you're getting you're getting something free that doesn't have a lot of value to it. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah. So, so the old I, scenario, you get what you pay for. Yep. Exactly. So okay. that's uh, just to touch base again about having uh, Mike or uh, John pull credit. Um, that's so crucial. Getting a lender credit report if they're willing to share that with you and go over that. That's invaluable. The information is. The fear of the unknown is what yeah. I always call it. Like you the know. doctor checkup, right? Yeah. A lot of people come in and they're just, well, I don't want my credit score to go down if you look at it. Well, if we have no idea what it looks like, that's the only way we can move forward. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're fortunate enough here this morning to have Jeff Sipes with Blue Water Credit. Jeff, tell us a little bit about your company, what it does, how it gets you from point A to B. Sure. Just give us a little overview. Yeah, so we shared earlier kind of uh, my story. And, uh, you know, we started our business. My wife and I are firm believers in, uh, you know, there's more to life than making a living. We want to make a difference. And so mm -hmm. um, we stress that with with our, all of our employees is that, you know, we're here to be advocates for anyone that wants help. Mm -hmm. And so we always offer a risk-free consultation. They can call in if they're out of the area. We work with anyone in the over the country. Um, or if they want to meet with us locally, we obviously meet locally. And we review a credit report. We're going to basically tell them you know, what they need to do on their end. And if there's anything we can do to help, we would outline that at that point. Yeah. So, Mike, you use Jeff a little bit, huh? Quite a bit, actually. Yeah. And what, what's a general scenario? Tell us a... Um, general scenario, pool credit... There was some damage, misreporting, may have been identity theft at one point. Yep. <clears throat> Client didn't do anything wrong, always paid their bills on time, or had a common name, someone else used their credit. Yeah. So really what we do, if we could do it, if we could help the client ourselves within you know, a week's time, we have a rescore process that we could use. Uh, there is a charge for that, but we could go through and we could fix minor, minor issues. But for the most part, if there's something significant on there, um, I don't even pretend to know how to fix it. I don't want to be the professional. I'm the mortgage guy. So I say, hey, we work with professionals. Jeff Sipes and his team are very ethical. We have great feedback from our clients. And we just do a warm handoff. I call Jeff or one of his team members, Heather, generally, and say, look, we have you know a, a client that needs some help. Um, we've reviewed their credit and I don't share anything without the client giving me the okay to share it. Right. So Jeff reach, reaches out, Heather will reach out and say, you know, absolutely 
make the appointment, they meet, and then uh, that's where the process starts, and then they just update us. Awesome. We have Les calling in here. Let's see what Les has to say. He's got Perfect. a credit question for us. Hello, Les. Good morning. How are you? Good, good morning. How are you guys? Doing well. Great. What can we do for you? I was just wondering. I had issues with my credit because it's like all three of my scores are way different for some reason. Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason that the scores vary is only about 70% of your items on your credit are on all three credit bureaus. So about a third of your credit items are only going to be at one or two of the credit bureaus, so that's why there's usually such a discrepancy in your credit scores. And I hired, I know you guys have heard of them, that Lexington Law. Yeah, they're the largest credit repair company in the world. Yeah, and how do you, because I mean, when I first hired them, so they were doing you know, a pretty good job, but now it seems like they're kind of, I don't know, just, I don't know if they're just not having any luck using off my reports. Or... Yeah, so with the way uh, credit repair works is you we, we can settle debt. Um, you can send in a dispute to the credit bureau if there's something that's inaccurate or incomplete. And then the credit bureau, as long as the credit bureau views it as a valid dispute, they're going to start an investigation, and that usually takes 30 days. They, they contact the creditor, and then they provide uh, verification from the, or they request verification from the creditor. And then as long as the creditor replies as that's correct or accurate, then the credit bureau keeps that information on your credit. But if the creditor um, does not reply or if the creditor says, oh, no, that's a mistake, then the credit bureau removes that from your credit, and then the, the credit bureau mails the results to you in the mail. So realistically, the credit bureaus are only going to look into maybe four to six disputes. And then after four yeah. to six disputes, uh, they're not going to continue to look in the investigation. So how long have you been working with Lexington Law? Uh, probably about six months now. Okay. So, yeah, so if I can interrupt here, Les, a lot of times I always say, you know, it takes a long time typically to have your credit go south, and it generally is going to take, you know, a, a while for it to come back. So we all have to be patient. We appreciate your call, Les. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. So, uh, you know, a great question there. You know, mm -hmm. I get the same thing all the yeah. time, and when when something does go south on your credit, it just it takes time. You got to abide by rules you guys have a ton yeah. of regulations i'm sure that you have to follow yep for sure yeah generally speaking you know our services we can usually improve a score 10 or 15 points a month okay 10 or 15 points a month yep for a maximum of six months at six months we've done all we can mm -hmm. so after six months it's just a matter of coaching the client what to do on their own and then also you know time does heal your credit so every month that your negative items get older, it, it doesn't your score will improve a, po a few points. Yeah, and I'll go back to earlier comment we made about credit. And once you pay off a credit card, do not close the card out because we talk about you know Jeff said what your uh, the balances are basically divided into what the credit limit is, and if you close that card out, you no longer have that credit limit right. working for you. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so you're supposed to use your cards at least once every six months too because a lot of times if you're not using them, then they'll, they'll close on you and mm -hmm. it's virtually impossible to get it back open. So mm -hmm. what about when we use our credit and uh, we're paying it off monthly? If, if we're using it and say we have a $2,000 limit, we're charging up to $1,800 every month, is, is that... But I'm paying it every month. Great question. This is so confusing. People think if they pay their credit card every month that when the uh, bureaus... Uh, when the lender pulls credit, mm -hmm. they'll have a zero balance. But that's not true because the credit card company sends in the information usually in the middle of your payment cycle. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a high balance on there. It's going to hurt your score. Got so, it. Yeah. So uh, here we are. We're going to be wrapping up our first hour. And I just was looking here. 35% of our score is past delinquencies. 30% of our score is debt ratios. 15% age of our file. 10% mix of credit. And then 10% uh, is inquiries. So how many inquiries are on our credit? Correct. So uh, Jeff, tell me a little bit about you uh, run your organization, you give back to the community, you're here local. Yeah. Uh, like fin we, finishes off here. Sure. Like we talked about earlier, my, my wife and I, I believe there's more to life than making a living. We want to make a difference. So uh, we, we've joined with uh, Bayside Church. Uh, we um, are part of Compassion First. And so on behalf of every client that hires us, we do make a $10 donation to Compassion First. And that uh, organization is over 60 divisions that go across the country and also across the world to help feed the homeless, uh, you know, um, 
uh, mosquito nets in the Congo, things like that. We're also um, we're holding a food drive tomorrow. Um, we're trying to collect the largest uh, food donation in Sacramento County history. So if anybody has any dry food, uh, they wanted to bring it by Bayside Church tomorrow uh, or Sunday. Um, we're accepting them. Awesome. Is that, is that any campus or just Granite Bay? The Granite Bay campus, sorry. <clears throat> Great. So empty out those uh, closets, get all your yeah. canned goods, get that extra food out to help out. And uh, we're thankful for Jeff here helping us out with credit, keeping us on track, keeping us uh, moving in the right direction and uh, with our credit scores. So we're going to have uh, a friend of mine, Tony Asaro, coming in for uh, the River Cats. Since we're talking baseball, we're talking April. Uh, Jeff is heading off to a soccer game. And uh, Mike is going to sit with us because he just mm-hmm. loves here. So I just love sitting, it. He's sitting here. You got to see this guy. He's <laughs> smiling. His head shining in the light, and he's just shaking his head. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pictures on Facebook. Here we come. Thank, yeah, thanks, John, and thanks, Mike, for having me. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Our pleasure. Great we appreciate program. it. So you we're bet. going to be back in the second hour to talk about uh, baseball. We're going to continue to talk about stimulus, craziness uh, economy out there. And uh, we'll come back. We'll answer any questions. Feel free to call us at 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. And uh, we'll get you all squared away. We're excited to be back for the second hour. Everybody that's waking up, getting moving, thank you so much. We'll be back. Talking money. And we're back. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. All right, all right. Jeff Tarbell is on his way to the airport, listening to us, probably laughing at us hysterically. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I'm John Fotorero. I'm here with Mike Ferrara. He's from Comstock also. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have Tony Asaro here from the River Cats. And uh, we're looking to talk a little bit about baseball. We've been talking about credit this morning. And, uh, you know, interesting comment that Tony had was, you know, you can actually go to a River Cats game without having to pull out a bank loan to go. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Welcome and good morning, guys. Thanks for getting up on Saturday morning, rolling out of bed. Tony over there smiling. I like that. And uh, here we go. Tell us, like, for me, you know, this, we are just talking to break too, how busy this week has been work-wise, uh, family-wise. Um, it seems like this week with baseball, there's just this excitement about baseball. Mm-hmm. I know Tony's got that excitement. For me, you know, I need to jump out of an airplane or do something like that for excitement. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people I know get super excited about baseball. And whether it's going to a Little League game, going to the Giants game, going to the A's, whatever it is, or just watching, it's super exciting. I think people get all revved up. And uh, I know you do, Tony. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about. I know River Cats took a, a loss the other day, yeah. but uh, first game, right? I think the most interesting thing about baseball, as I watch my my son who's playing right now here for the for the A's, mm-hmm. that'd be the Eastern Little League A's, yes. not not the Oakland A's. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, is that you know how do you teach a kid or even us us in life how if you're shooting for a hundred. 350, 35 percent is pretty darn good in baseball mm-hmm. when you're batting. Yes, and you know here you got professionals out there swinging and missing, and and they just keep going. And I think a lot of us in life need to do that. Is just you know keep swinging for a hundred, keep swinging and swinging, and and just keep on going because uh, it's just statistics. Oh, that's all it is. Exactly. I mean, what you guys were talking about earlier today is statistics, and uh, baseball is all based around statistics. It's mm-hmm. it's it's one of the greatest games that we can ever use to teach our children with because mm-hmm. if you're the greatest player who ever played this game you're a 300 hitter mm-hmm. that means you fail seven out of ten times what other games do we play uh, that or or, or or lessons that we teach uh, our children where, where that that statistic comes in play mm-hmm. that you learn from those failures you know uh, I, I, I speak to hundreds of thousands of kids each year and uh, one of the things I point out is that that 30 percent you know that you fail seven out of ten times and I asked a group of fifth graders the other day I said if if I was a basketball player if I was LeBron James and I only made three baskets out of ten do you think my coach would put me back out there and they go no no (laughs) I said if I was a football player I was a quarterback and I only Mm -hmm. completed three passes out of ten do you think my coach would put me back out there and one of the fifth graders said, 
Well, if you were a raider, he would. <laughs> <laughs> so the beauty of understanding how life's lessons come through the games we play. John, you talked about opening day. Opening day, whether it's Little League or whether it's uh, the major leagues or, or minor league, it's a renewal of life. Mm-hmm. Everybody has an even record on opening day. Right. Yeah. It's, it, even for my wife, you know, who's not a sports fan, but, you know, we have pancake breakfast. Yes. It's like the, the community gets excited for yes. pancake breakfast. They Just going out, and she was out last week, you know, and we're talking, you know, here we are talking money. Well, what's this got to do with money and the economy? Well, people lifting their spirits, getting outside mm-hmm. and, and seeing their kids, seeing our families just smile a little bit creates that active environment and you know for her she's like gosh i saw all these people and everybody's busy and we have our corporate sponsorships out there uh it's fantastic and and like i said this week some of the emails and facebook and everything else going on is just it's crazy it's just baseball fever and uh it's just amazing and the same thing in soccer or, or football or whatever it happens to be and it's, it's what this country was built on, mm-hmm. gentlemen. I think that when there is a need, if there's a need to repair that field, to, to create new uniforms, to be able to, to, to reach out and have more families join, to be able to have families who can't afford to join to get scholarships, mm-hmm. it's not coming from the government. It's not coming from an outside source. It's coming from the people in our community who have that joy, who find those recreational dollars to donate to be able to help the community be a better place. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole concept around the, the River Cats as well. The wealth that we get is what we give back. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So you got Rayleigh Field, right? Giving back a little bit. Mm-hmm. The River Cats giving back. I always wonder about the River Cats. So you got this baseball player who's making a decent income. $1,700 right? a month. $1,700 a month, right? It's decent. <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> well, if you're 17, 18, it's a lot. If you're 27, <laughs> it's not so much. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we go over there, we take the kids, we take the families, and uh, it's a great night out sharing. You know, economically, I don't know, the revenue it brings to Sacramento. You right. know, we hear all this talk all the time about the Kings and, and all that, which is very important mm-hmm. to us. Yes. Very important. Yes. Um, I know you're out and about every day. You're, you're talking about River Catch. Mm-hmm. You're talking about to the kids about uh, building character, um, all these different things. And tell, tell us a little bit about the team this year. What's going on with the River Cats team? Well, first of all, from an from a economic standpoint, 65 full-time employees like myself – over 300 employees per game, wow. and, and then another 400 in concessions. So we do mm-hmm. make a huge economic impact in our community. We are a catalyst that's been able to generate a whole new culture, a, a, new, uh, a new direction in West Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Actually, I believe because of the River Cats, we've literally shifted the main street of Sacramento to the river. And that the river on both sides now is the main street of Sacramento. And economically, as you gentlemen mm-hmm. know, uh, especially with the new infrastructure uh, mm-hmm. in the triangle there, the building that's going on, it's only going to get better and better and better. And uh, so we're, we're excited about that. Yeah, and we have a great resource down there with that river. You know, it's, we, it's you know, Sacramento side, then you have the golden, the bridge, you yes. walk across the field, mm-hmm. and West Sacramento is going to do a great job over there too. It's amazing. And and then from an economic standpoint, uh, we joked before, you don't have to get a loan to, to go to the game. I, I enjoy going to uh, to the Giants or the A's or the 49ers, but it is an expensive. Oh, it's a trip. I mean, it's an all-day experience. and <laughs> you, yeah. co- you come home beat up. Yeah, and, you really and, do. And you've made a major. Three o'clock in the morning. You've made a major, uh, <laughs> major contribution. Yeah. You come to a River Cats game, you can get a ticket for as little as $8. Mm-hmm. And the most expensive seat in the house is $22. And with a different theme each night. You know, you come on a Monday, and, and it's a throwback Saturday. Sacramento Solons, we honor them, and it, that, that there's there are things that you can buy in the park that you would have been able to pay for in the 1940s and the 1950s. You come on a Tuesday, it's dollar dogs and, and dollar dessert. Now, John knows that I don't eat dogs or dessert, but but we, we all need to, to reach out and, and have those 
good kinds of things. Absolutely. We were talking, uh, Mike, that my, we're obese guys over here. <laughs> that, by we're, like one pound. We're in our 30s and 40s, <laughs> and uh, we're obese. But th- this gentleman that we are happy to have here, Tony Asaro, and he's he's uh, mid-60s, I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he got on this kick a couple years ago to be healthy and to, uh, you know, he's out there in his driveway doing push-ups before he goes on a walk. <laughs> and I'm just like demoralized (laughs) you know i get on my motorcycle and i turn the throttle that's my exercise for the day so uh that's important you come on a wednesday to rayleigh field free parking through jiffy loop how cool is that now you you tell me anybody else that you know that's out there doing uh uh, recreational kinds of things where you can get free parking on wednesdays at rayleigh field you come on a thursday I, i can't talk to the kids about it but it's a an adult beverage night, two dollar beer on Thursdays. Friday and Saturday fireworks afterwards, like tonight. Mm-hmm. There'll be fireworks after the game, and then on Sundays it's kids' day. They get twelve and under run the bases, and then there's the bobbleheads and you know all of those kinds of giveaways as well. So, so even for someone like your wife, who who I love and and uh, it loves uh, to be around family, how important family is to her. It's not the game; it's the experience. Mm-hmm. It's in the third inning, a seven-foot-tall river cat comes out of the center field fence on the back of a transport with a cannon in the shape of a hot dog shooting hot dogs into the stands, and people in $400 suits are fighting to get those hot (laughs) dogs that were wrapped four hours before the game ever started. That's that's the joy of what happens. At that's good field. stuff. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that some of our phenomenal. best family night memories wise is you know is going to River Cats game and hanging out on the grass yes. and watching the kids somersault down the hill and luckily the fence was there you know so they don't drop twenty feet. But I remember yeah. in two thousand when I when I first started with the River Cats fourteen seasons ago. Uh, uh, we brought some fans out early uh, before we opened the, the ballpark, and no one had been in the park before. And that's the first thing that we saw were mm-hmm. children rolling down the mm-hmm. the the the, uh, the lawn out there, and the joy of that. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, we realized that we 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 thought we had set something up right, but we realized how powerful it it truly is. Mm-hmm. And the the joy of that as well for you is that you're not disturbing. Anybody sitting around in mm-hmm. a seat, you go exactly. to a, you go to a major league game, and and people would be upset, you know, with your kid doing that, but not there. <laughs> yeah, we went to the the Pebble Beach Pro Am, and my son's he's a golfer, he's eleven sure. now, and he fell asleep on the bench, and people <laughs> were getting upset because he was taking you know, like some vital spot on the eighteenth green there and he conked out everywhere but the blessing in that is he gets you know if we could sleep where right where we have you know on a bench in middle of 60 degree weather in monterey that'd be pretty cool that'd be pretty cool all right so river cats are active Mm -hmm. uh we're active in the community here doing a lot uh we're seeing sacramento growing we're seeing uh, a lot of activity with the kings um you know each and every day we're seeing people uh trying to do more, mm-hmm. get out and about. Mm-hmm. Um, baseball brings that excitement. You know, that first week we got, you know, what do we have today? We have baseball today. We got Final Four. Right. We have uh, our kids running around the 8 million different activities. Mm-hmm. And uh, half of you are probably out there driving around right now going, yep, here I am driving. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions for us, uh, you can call us at 339 1140. You can call us at 1 800 920 1140. We can talk baseball. We can take more talk mortgages. We can talk credit. We can talk uh, whatever you like. We're just here to answer some questions, share some information, and uh, we'll go from there. So, Mike, what, what do you you have any quiz questions over there? I for do us? actually. Um, I have this has to do with home improvements on your house, and we're in spring, you know, moving into summer before you know it. And what is uh, the number one thing, or what can you do to your house to increase the price of the home? In the summer versus the winter. Okay, so if I'm going to sell my house, going to sell your house, and I want to get a little more money out of it. Mm-hmm. What might I have in my house that's going to bring me some more money? That's correct. Difference between regular season and summer season. Correct. Okay, so uh, give us a call. Let us know. We have our Tijan pizzas from Roundtable. We also have uh, pairs of River Tac- River Cat tickets. I was thinking about uh, nice job. It, it's my cold getting me. But uh, <laughs> there is a game tonight. Is yes. that right? Yes, there game is. Game time tonight with uh, fireworks, 705, which is awesome yeah. to see. 7.05 p.m. tonight. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Jack.
Talking money. Talking money. Well, all righty then. We're back to Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Yes, yes. Good morning for all you who just woke up. Get out of bed. Get moving. We got a lot going on this morning. We've been here and we've been talking about credit. We're rolling into baseball. We're talking a little bit about character. We're talking a little bit about stimulus. Um, character. You know, I'm reading some of these articles over here on you know billions of dollars of losses, and we'll get into that in the next uh, next segment. But right now, we're going to continue to talk about. Um, just the River Cats. We're going to talk about uh, talk with Tony Asaro here. We're fortunate enough to have him come by and uh, give us some information about the River Cats, what they're doing for our community, uh, we, what, how we can enjoy it more. We're, uh, we have Mike Ferrara here. He is from uh, Comstock Mortgage. He is the Roseville branch manager. He told me he worked 12 hours this week. In, in one day. In one day. It okay. Was a, it was a banker half day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as we get going here, we've been talking all day. April just brings this excitement. I mean, it's something about April. It, it's the first quarter's over, second quarter starting. Um, kids are off playing baseball and soccer and different sports. Uh, school's almost over for you that are out running around your kids. What are you going to do this summer with your kids? You know, how are you going to keep them busy? Um, Baseball started. Baseball has this buzz, like I said earlier. I mean, for me, I got to be riding my motorcycle, jumping out of an airplane, um, climbing something high and steep for that excitement. But uh, fortunate with with Tony here, he knows the excitement of baseball. There's I don't know how many players there are in Major League and and Triple A baseball. I, I can't even fathom how many. Seven hundred and fifty in at both levels. Seven hundred and fifty in at the both whole, levels in the whole country. So it's wow. very it's it's a very oh, wow. select group. And, and I was seven hundred and fifty. I I thought it would be higher than that. Seven hundred and fifty major leaguers, seven hundred and fifty yeah. uh triple A players. Okay. Yeah. All right. So seven hundred and fifty and they're just enjoying the heck out of it. Oh loving it. Loving, loving it. it. We'll start, you know, we have these twenty five players that we have on our roster right now. Over the course of the season, we'll end up with uh, hundred and ninety to two hundred transactions between us and the Oakland A's, who are our parent club. And probably end up with 80 different ball players who will play in Sacramento. Last year we had two who started with us and two who ended with us, but 80 different players. And yet, in 13 seasons in this community, we've won the division 11 times. Yeah, incredible. No other team in professional sports at any level can make that claim. The Yankees are the closest to us with eight division titles. But they got the same players every year, mm-hmm. and a huge payroll. Huge. Yeah. So why is that? I mean, we a- I know I asked uh, Matt Carson, who came to us from the New York Yankees. He, he he's now gone on and to another organization, but he played with us for a couple of years and and great ball player. And I said, you know, seventeen hundred a month, Matt, wife, kids. You, Mama wants you at the show. You know, where you're Absolutely. getting 1700 a day there. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, how does that happen? How does that happen up there on that big board? How do we get those uh, division championships, those four world championships as uh, the Sacramento River Cats? And he said, Tony, every player who comes in here, different than other organizations, they don't want to be the ones who didn't make that happen. Mm-hmm. So they're going to play their best. I can't do anything about whether Billy Bean pulls me up to the big leagues all I can do is be the best player I can be today for my teammates. And, John, I share that with a lot of young people out there, and I ask them to bring their best every day. They, they're, they're teachers, they're principal, they're parents. Mm-hmm. They ask the same thing. As, mm-hmm. as uh, potential uh, bosses, mm-hmm. you ask that of your, your, your staff. Mm-hmm. Bring your best every day. And we don't have the same to bring every day, but if you bring your best – you can never be defeated. The score might say you lost. You might run out of time, but you will never be defeated. And that's the key, I think, of how we've had that kind of success in Sacramento with uh, those ball players. It's just been incredible. So uh, also, I'm thinking numbers because the numbers guy, right? I'm thinking, yeah. all right, seventeen hundred bucks a month, seventeen hundred bucks a day. A- April, <laughs> April to the end of August is all that. That those are the months they get paid, and then seventeen hundred a day. Uh, minimum salary in the bigs is uh, three hundred. Well, it's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. That's the guy sitting on a bench. So we have seven hundred and fifty major leagues, mm-hmm. seven hundred and fifty in the triple A, mm-hmm. and a whole lot more trying to get there. Right. 
starting from our kids playing Little League right exactly. now. Exactly. And uh, baseball, American, apple pie, right, all these good things. Um, just mind-boggling when I think about these players out there. And, and, again, like I started the show off just talking about the excitement this this baseball theme brings. And, you know, you go down to the Giants when, when they're in the World Series. And, right. I mean, people are spending how much money? Just a park. Mm-hmm. And, and half of them are spending to park, and then they get towed, too. So right. uh, yeah. I always find those stories <laughs> the most interesting. But uh, at Rayleigh Field, you know, just hearing that uh, Jiffy Lube Wednesday nights is, is paying for parking. Yeah. And that that's phenomenal. I can't mm-hmm. imagine the dollars that uh, I don't know. Is that a, just amazing for the community to step out and do these things to bring everybody together to uh, just be part of something? Mm-hmm. If, and, you, if you actually look at research and and, and look at what the Rivercats have done <clears throat> this year uh, by shifting the prices in the ballpark, they've actually lowered the price per seat per game, which is pretty amazing in this economy. But they get it. You know, if if you're there, if you can afford it, you only have so many recreational dollars to spend, whether it be on the on the theater, in, mm-hmm. in the arts, in, wherever it is that your passion is. Um, but if you can come to a ball game for less than it costs to go to the movies with your family, and in the fourth, fifth, sixth, mm-hmm. seventh inning, you haven't made a major investment, and, and it, your kids mm-hmm. are tired from rolling down the hill, exactly, and they want to go home, you can go home, and you can okay. listen to Johnny. Uh, you know, on the radio uh, and and hear mm-hmm. the end of the game, but everybody gets taken care of in that process. I think. Yeah. So you just walk out the back door and and you didn't break the bank. Yeah, that's right. You didn't ruin your credit. That's right. And uh, you're able to watch a game. So yeah. very interesting. Uh, we we got a couple text lines here talking about uh, our our question was how in the summer months can you get a little more dollars out of your sale, and what is that item? We do have a winner. Uh, one of the items listed here: outdoor kitchen. Uh, that to me oh, sounds good, yeah. but that is not the answer. Was not the answer. What was the answer, Mike? It was the swimming pool. All right. So let me think. Swimming pool. You get a little more in the summer if it's winter. Somebody walks in, you got a swimming pool. They're not going to pay the extra dollars for it mm-hmm. in the summer. They're thinking, I just want to dive in. Yes, I'll pay the extra money for it. And yet, as we know, when you look at dollar for dollar, if you're going to install a pool, what it costs versus what you're going to get back for it in the end doesn't quite work out mathematically, does it? No, it doesn't. In fact, I have a few statistics here. Um, the highest use of money for improvements to your home is adding a deck addition in wood to your backyard adds 87% on a resale. And then the two others, which are most common, we hear always the kitchen, people buy houses for kitchen. Major remodel actually only gets you about 73% back. So the average cost is about 60000 and you get forty four back, forty four thousand back on a resale, but a minor kitchen remodel. So maybe putting in new appliances, putting in some granite countertops, that average cost is twenty one thousand, but you get eighteen thousand back on a resale on average, eighty six percent. Huh. Yeah. Well, the reason I was bringing that up is uh, Kent wasn't able to meet us today, but uh, he was going to be here. He was our renovation guy. There are some loans out there now mm-hmm. that we're seeing for renovation of your home. There's, you, we used to be able to tap our equity, take seconds, do all these Correct. different things. Now there's some renovation loans out there where, um, you know, you can do a minor kitchen remodel, have some value mm-hmm. there. So there are some loan products out there um, available. And the other thing we were talking about is statistically, mm-hmm. you know, everybody wants to get money yes. back. <laughs> well, the strange thing about baseball is statistically 30% is good. Actually, 30% is really good. Mm-hmm. All you know, of fame. My son's up there batting, and he strikes out, and he shakes his head. And I said, as long as you go down swinging, as long as you go down swinging. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're talking about this morning getting up to bat, not being fearful of your credit. Mm-hmm. If, you need, if you're not sure about your credit, just call us. Call someone. Call a professional. Run it. Know where you're at. Shake it off. Move on. Same with baseball. Here's these guys getting up every day getting the bat, Mm -hmm. and swinging, and sometimes they strike out. Well, 70% of the time, they're just not getting on base, whether it's a strikeout, whether it's a pop fly, all these different pieces. So I think baseball, as an American sport, really does – there's so much we could correlate with baseball. And Tony, you know, every day – just excited about baseball, mm-hmm. you know. He says he's got the best job in the in the world. I think, yeah, in the I think world so. or the country. Yeah, 
and uh, and p- tell us why. Why is that? Well, I get a chance to uh, go out and, and, and work with the community. And so I speak to uh, 200 to 220 schools a year, a um, quarter of a million kids. Uh, we talk about character. We talk about uh, attitude, attendance, and academics. I believe that 90% of our life is our attitude and 10% are those challenges that we 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 are are, are given mm-hmm. and, and when I talk to kids about that it doesn't matter whether T- they're Tell me those stop. I mean kids, adults, you know that that mm-hmm. hit me. Tell me those numbers again. 90% uh, of, of how we react, our attitude uh, determines what's going to happen in our lives. 10% are those challenges, those fears that we have. And when I talk to kids about that, they understand that. They understand that if you get knocked down nine times, you got to get up 10. You Mm -hmm. have to get up 10. That no matter what, you do not give up. The word that you were talking about earlier, the words that you were were saying, John, about, about all the challenges that we have, hope, those four those four letters, that word, is the one that allows us to continue to go on and, 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 and hold on for when you want to give up. Hope is what keeps you alive. It's what keeps you going forward, no matter whether mm-hmm. it's from an economic uh, challenge or, or personal challenge or whatever it happens to be. Uh, fear that's out there, hope that you're going to get through that. And uh, that's that's that 90% attitude that we talk about. And then the other thing that I talk, you know, we're a triple A team. So I tell them that a those, good one. Yes, a very good one. <laughs> so I tell them that those three A's stand for attitude, attendance, showing up every day, being Cal Ripken Jr., not the greatest ball player who ever played the game, didn't hit mm-hmm. more home runs, more world champion, showed up for his team every day, every day for 16 years, never missed a day, be there every day. For your family, for your community, for your school team, for for you know for all of those things, you got to be there. And then academically, or or uh, you know however you 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 want to measure that, you're just going to soar. You're going to soar. You know, the other day we had a huge storm here in Sacramento. You remember that with the thunder and the lightning sure. and everything else. And I I was talking to a group of kids and I said, you know what the birds do on a day like that? I said they they get inside their nest and they huddle away, mm-hmm. except for one bird. The eagle. The eagle flies above the storm. Be an eagle. Choose to be above the mm-hmm. challenge. I think I just got Great chills. I, just got I chills. have goosebumps right now. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, the eagle. I, You know, again, we're talking money. We're talking economics. We're talking uh, credit this morning. We're talking baseball now. Um, all, all that that we do each and every day to uh, have that attitude, to show up, to, to soar above – um, it's, it is a challenge, it you is. know, we're challenged every day by, you know, all the different things we're able to get involved in. You know, we were just talking earlier about, uh, how much debt has been accumulated, uh, because people are out there trying to do all these different things. Well, you can go to, you know, River Cats game for 20, 30 bucks, I would say, sit in the lawn, sure. family, uh, have a couple hot dogs, peanuts. Uh, yes. All, all the that shells goodness. everywhere. Yes. Yep. My, my my kids always want to have the uh, uh, what do you call that candy corn the yeah the, sticky the cotton corn cotton, cotton candy, candy. Cotton, yeah. oh, you know yeah. before the food and then their hands are blue and purple and pink and, <laughs> and they want to give you a hug and, and you're thinking what's the big deal yeah this is baseball that's we're right. out having fun who cares let them have it that's right so uh, interesting uh, the River Cats are off to a zero and one loss. But as we know, they've won the last 11 out of 12 seasons. Mm-hmm. Pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that, I think, does have to do with attitude, has to do with commitment, mm-hmm. um, has to do with the ball field's doing um, as we get out there each and every day. So uh, wh- what else are you doing I, out there? Well, I always tell people, you know, that we play 144 games in 151 days, 72 at Rayleigh Field. But wow. I know. Isn't that amazing? It's 144 amazing. out of 151 days. Out of 151 days. So there's not a lot of days off. And, and these guys are there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to play a game at 7 o'clock that night. They're, they're, they're working. They're working hard. That's why Mama wants them up at the big league level. That's but, right. But in that whole process, it's a marathon. It's, it's not a sprint. And uh, we've actually we lost last night as well. We lost the first two games of the season. I guarantee you. When the water seeks its level, we'll be there. We'll be there at the end, mm-hmm. and uh, not necessarily with the same players that we have right now. 
Uh, we're going to have a whole lot of new players come in and, and be a part of, of that uh, that journey. Uh, but it is a long journey, and, and you gotta you got to hang in there each and every day. Are there any uh, – who's playing right now? Any, any guys coming down from the big leagues that are playing currently? We have four – uh, excuse me, five number one picks playing on this roster with the River Catch right now, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, gosh, Grant Green uh, out of USC is going to be a big league ball player. He's 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 right there. Uh, Jamal Weeks, who has been in the bigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Derek Barton's on this ball club. There are the kid playing center field for us. Choice is an amazing ball player who is going to uh, set the world on fire down the road. Michael Taylor. Uh, out of Stanford University, uh, uh, just a great ball player, and I could I can name a whole bunch of others. In that, we actually have a local kid out of Wilton uh, who went to Elk Grove High School, Fritas, who's a, a, one of our catchers, uh, which is an exciting story in itself too. It goes back to what you were talking about, John, with your son who. Uh, gets excited when they have uh, youth baseball day at Rayleigh Field and he gets to go around the track and parade with all the other mm-hmm. kids and they get to throw out the first pitch in the Field of Dreams. And then in the, at the high school level, they get to come out and play and we have over $90,000 go back from the River Cats to high school baseball for 20, well, actually 40 teams. And then at the college level, Sac State played there, Chico State's playing there. And then the River Cats. So, I mean, it doesn't get much better now. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Very cool. So we're getting ready to take a break here, and uh, we got another quiz question coming up. Part of this quiz question has to do with this, cutbacks. Cutbacks on the radar. On the radar. So uh, come Sunday, 149 control towers are going to close in the airlines. And uh, I, I find that just somewhat astounding that, that that's one of the cutbacks that we're doing. And uh, interesting enough, out of the collisions currently, um, there's 388 at or near non-towered airports. Just before they're going to close another 149, 388 that are closing, uh, already having collisions at them. We're going to close more. And uh, between the airports, there's some collisions. Uh, I love this statistic: not counted. So the collisions that are not counted, I guess they happen in Never Never Land. <laughs> but uh, lead us in here, Mike. What do you got for us on on our quiz question? These are for Artesian Pizzas at Roundtable. We thank you for their sponsorship. We we'll also have a pair of River Cat tickets, and uh, we're thankful to River Cat stepping up, mm-hmm. sponsoring our show here. Uh, tell us what you got. I'll narrow it down a little bit, so I'll actually give you three options. Okay, so we'll cheat a little bit. So the di- the uh, three options are. Does it does the collision happen taxiing right? So when the plane is going out, get, getting ready to take off or coming back in, let me say a quick prayer for Jeff Tarbell as he's about yeah. to <laughs> exactly taxi we talk right about now. this. Um, the other one is mid-flight, which mm-hmm. we would never want to see happen, and then um, the approach. So which of the three, the taxi, the mid-flight, or the approach? What is the number one collision area? Okay, and that's whether there is radar or not. Regardless, is, with our air flights, what is the busy? What segment is the collision occurring? Correct. So uh, there's a quiz question. You can call in at three three nine eleven forty. You can call at one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. You can text us and let us know here. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're uh, going to be right back. We got Tony Asaro from the River Cats, Mike Ferraro from Comstock Mortgage. I'm John Fodorero, and we're going to be right back. Talking Money! And the action continues on Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. All right. We were talking about airplanes and flights and crashes, and my microphone sounds like an airplane just rumbled through it. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I'm disconnected, but uh, (laughs) we're rolling here. So uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. We're on a final little segment here, and uh, we've been fortunate enough to talk about credit with Jeff Sipes from Blue Water Credit. We have Tony Asaro here from the River Cats, River Cats Baseball. Can you feel the roar? Roar. And... uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, let's see what we talk about. I'm going to talk, these are interesting things I saw this week in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, X-Trader admits to fraud. He uh, p- 
Matthew Taylor placed an $8.3 billion futures bet and hid it from his bosses. Now he faces a possible long-term sentence. So uh, I'm looking here saying, okay, guy's got a $150,000 salary. He's expected a $1.6 million bonus, and he's risking somebody else's $8.3 billion. I think there's something wrong with that in the community. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Enron's ex-CEO that could seek a shorter sentence. Here, look at uh, Jeffrey Skilling. He, uh, when Enron collapsed, they put more than 5,000 people out of work. Wiped out more than two billion in employee pensions, mm -hmm. rendered worthless sixty billion in Enron stock, and I like this gentleman, uh, George Maddox. He spent thirty years in Enron as a plant manager, and uh, he lost one point three million dollars in retirement mm -hmm. savings. It's a guy there for thirty years. His comments would be say, uh, "It'd be okay with me if they would force him to live on twenty four hundred dollars a month, like Mr. Maddox was forced to live on." So uh, I can agree with that. Mm -hmm. The other item to note this week is, uh, where's my paperwork here? I can't remember things. You know, too many things going on. But talking about Cyprus, Cyprus, that small little island out there, big banking. And uh, if you're, you have your money there, they're going to, you know, they're talking about, they're going to actually, this is their stimulus. This is how they're going to fix it. They're going to cut their, fi their bonuses, their Easter bonuses to all their employees. I don't they know have, why. They have they an get, Easter bonus? Easter bonus. I'm not sure why they do that. They're also going to cut back on the style of flight for their executives. I guess they have to now fly with other people. I'm not sure where that's going. And uh, those that have uninsured money there are actually going to lose some of their own hard-earned money. So uh, some of that just, I don't know, just doesn't quite <laughs> sit me right. You know, this, this guy right here is like, this look on his face admitting the fraud, like, well, I was just trying to get my bonus. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. So, uh, again, thank you for Tony being here. He's from the uh, River Cats of Sacramento, Mike Ferrari here. And uh, tell us, Tony, a little bit about what you see out there in, in the world. Well, you know, you know, when I get an opportunity to speak to uh, nonprofit groups, to uh, business leaders, people of influence, young people in our community, I talk to them about character. You know, when I was, uh, when I was uh, their age, uh, dreaming about playing baseball, I had a coach. I had a coach who would stand in front of my first period class every day. He'd shake my hand, and he'd ask me the same question every day. He'd say, Tony, what's the word character mean? And I would tell my coach, character is what you do. And my coach would say, when nobody is looking. Mm -hmm. And then I asked those young people to, to repeat after me, respect, responsibility, caring, honesty, truthfulness, courage. Character is what you do when no one's looking. Those are the character pillars. Mm -hmm. Are we perfect, John? No. Do we make mistakes, Mike? Absolutely. Every day. Yeah. But we have definitions in our life that help us make the choice, knowing what the repercussions are going to be. One of the things we talked about just a few minutes ago was reputation. Each and every one of us has a reputation. Those gentlemen you talked about in the paper who made really – terrible character choices have a reputation that's what other people say about us that's not who we are who we are is the character within us we know what's right mm -hmm. we know what's wrong i don't care how young you are you know right off mm -hmm. the bat what is the correct thing to do or not now the difference is when we're babies when we're children we have needs mm -hmm. we need to be dry we need to be loved we need to be fed and then we get older and we have wants i want that house i want that car i want those shoes i want that cell phone i want to be that person's friend i never thought i'd ever quote mick jagger and i didn't think he'd be alive today john <laughs> but you don't always get what you want you always get true. what you need there you go that mm -hmm. is a good strong quote right there you don't oh, i'm not gonna sing here <laughs> I, I don't know. Talking to my wife, she still thinks I'm a, I am a baby. You know, wanting to be fed and like that's not very nice, babe. So character, okay. So as we talk about uh, credit, we talk about baseball, how it correlates to any business. Keep batting, keep getting up to there. Um, what else are you telling people when you're out there on the road? You're talking to how many kids? 
Uh, oh, a quarter of a million a, a year. And, 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 you know, and I see it every day at the ballpark, you know, those 72 home games that we have, those young men of character, those, those gentlemen, those ball players who truly stay to who they are, stay within that, that realm. Uh, they're the ones that are getting out there early signing autographs. They're the ones that are interacting with the community. They're the ones that are they're always volunteering to come with me on a player's wives food drive or to help. Like, for example, tonight is autism awareness uh, night at Rayleigh Field. All those ball players will be wearing uh, jerseys that represent uh, autism awareness. And we'll be raffling those off uh, to make money for the Mind Institute to help. Uh, overcome the, the the challenges of autism. Um, they get that. They 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 don't make much. You know, we 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 we've mm-hmm. talked about that. But they understand that they can choose a cause more important than themselves. Mm-hmm. And by choosing that cause more important than themselves, they create a wealth, a wealth that is way beyond the material wealth that they're going to get. And they get better and better and better, and the opportunities are there for them. Those who don't, and, and we have those on the team as well, the, they go away. Mm-hmm. They go away because um, we talked a little bit before about, uh, you know, five-tool player in baseball is what you look for. And so when scouts go out and they look for that five-tool player, they're looking, they run them through a combine, see how fast, how quickly they throw, how, you know, all of those, the power that they have. Sometimes it's that two-tool player of character who makes it to the show. Mm-hmm. over that five-tool player who doesn't have that character inside them. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So we're looking for someone with the heart, with the soul, the desire. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, Passion. You, you talked about the beginning attitude, mm-hmm. attendance, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, be an eagle. Get yeah. up there. Mm-hmm. Soar. What, what ogre, you know, they soar a, above the rain, above the clouds. Right. So that's uh, that's good stuff. I, I appreciate that. And, uh we let's see. Did we get a winner to our our response there? No winner. Okay. So we we're talking about the fact that Sunday um, there's some cutbacks and the tow- control towers are going to close. And uh, the question was, when is the when are most collisions happening? Is it taxi? Is it in the air? Mid-flight. Or is it mid mid flight or descent? I guess is yeah. that right? So uh, that is the question. If you want a pair of River Cats tickets. Call in. We have them. We are very thankful for the River Cats to sponsor our show. We're very thankful for Tony Asaro being here. Thank you. Talking about baseball, talking about the team, what it does for our community. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike here. He's uh, just shining and glaring. I'm, look- and I'm looking good over here. He is looking good. <laughs> so uh, it's been a great day. I don't know. What, what do you guys got planned for the rest of the day here? Uh, my son has a golf outing. Nice. Um Girls are hanging out. We have a dance competition tomorrow, and then we're going to a uh, benefit for Granite Bay tonight for their rugby team. Uh, one of my friends invited us, so we'll be doing that. I'll be speaking tonight at uh, Running for Rhett. Uh, it's a, uh, a running organization here in town. Uh, they're having a carb dinner. Myself and Kevin Bracy will be uh, guest speakers, and uh, then the ball game afterwards, and you know, help help autism. That's a yeah. busy day. It's a busy, busy day. day. So uh, I know everybody else is out there busy, running their kids around, taking care of business. I know we got a lot of listeners that are working hard, doing what they do. Uh, what we could share with you today, think about it. We have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, don't be fearful. Give us a call. Let us know any questions on credit. Uh, hang in there. Get up to bat each and every day. I'm going to take off here shortly. I'm going to get out and see what Dylan's doing. Last game he hit his first ball first uh, hit to the outfield it was exciting to, for me to hear mm-hmm. the crack of the bat and uh, that's what I'm going to leave you with just the excitement of April, the springtime baseball uh, get out there, do it keep swinging, make it happen Yep. and uh, we'll catch you back next week, thank you so much for tuning in, thank you all Aloha Talking money